Welcome back to The Human Perspective. It's really my privilege today to be talking with Patrick Coakley, who is a very complicated, interesting, diverse, intersectional person. And I wanted to interview him because he has so many different parts of him that I'd like to share. And really, he can speak to diverse audiences. So I would appreciate it if you like this interview to share it as widely as possible. So welcome, Patrick. Thank you for having me. So this will be a difficult question, but could you give us a little bit of an introduction of who Patrick Coakley is? Oh, gracious, super. Yeah, it's not a hard question at all. Um, I don't know. I, some, in some ways, I, I feel like I'm just still the same kid from South Carolina. Um, I'm a person with disability, low vision, been low vision all my life. And part of the reason I live in DC um, was to really be able to be in a place where I had a little bit more personal agency. I was able to get around on my own. Um, I came here to go to Howard. Uh, so Howard, in addition, University. Howard University, in addition to obviously being a person with disability, definitely a proud black person with a disability. Um, and that was in 96, and I don't think I ever left really after that. I stayed and continued to work and live in the district. and. That brought me to learning about the disability community, learning a little bit more about myself, um, and even getting into some of the advocacy work. So, Howard is a historically black college. Yes. And um, maybe you could talk a little bit about why Howard was important for you, uh, both as a black man and as a disabled person. And did those two come together at Howard? It's interesting because I wouldn't say that my disability identity sort of came together at Howard. Um, when I was there, I was definitely still very much learning about um, how I was going to sort of interact with this world. In fact, there were, there were several classes that I pretty much all but failed because I did not reach out to get the proper accommodations. I didn't know that I could go to career disability services. You know, I'd sort of been trained up until that point of sort of doing what I needed to do the best I can but I didn't understand that there were tools and resources I could get and use. So you didn't know about the laws and what the laws... Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. I, I, I think very much the fear of double indemnity, um, the idea that... You what know, do you mean by that? If you, if you have one strike against you being a person of color, um, the fear of sort of being out as a person with disability adds a second one. Um, and I was fortunate that I had a lot of friends who checked multiple boxes. Maybe they were black, maybe they were also gay, um, and, and, or maybe they were poor, maybe they were from, you know, outside of the country. We had a lot of uh, students who were immigrants as well. Um, so I got to learn about that, but there was also still sort of that fear. I'd say the good thing, though, about Howard, even sort of their, their need to improve their accessibility, but the good thing about Howard, though, is that it created a vocabulary for understanding what it meant to be marginalized. And at Howard, the history, especially of the black civil rights movement, but also multiple movements, is a, a topic of study and a topic of discourse. So you think regularly about protest movements. You think regularly about what your advocacy means. And you have multiple generations of advocates there. So you get to also think clearly about, OK, what did they do when they were young? What am I doing when, that, when I'm their age? Did they believe me? the way that their parents believed them. Um, and a lot of that, that sort of thought and that vocabulary, it created a vocabulary so that when I came to disability, it was easy to understand.